I have finally done it. I can finally hash a file into a donut. Also, I got these new glasses. So for today's video, I'm going to be going all over my donut hashing algorithm. So let me show you how it works. It's actually pretty simple. So you have this little website right here and all you gotta do is select a file to upload. I think I'll go with this thumbnail here and you hit open and it turns the thumbnail into a donut, which I think is pretty cool. A little useless, but you know, pretty cool. Well, maybe not entirely useless. I like to joke that when quantum computing breaks factor-based encryption, you're gonna be using donuts to store your passwords from now on. So I hope you like donuts on the server. But anyway, let's break down the code a little bit. So I spent only about a week working on this beautiful little Rust code base here. And it's this about 200 lines of code that can convert any file I give it into a donut. So how does it work? Well, I'm gonna spare you all the technical details. I implemented this in Rust just because, well, I wanted to. You know, I wanted to get some more Rust practice and I knew I could actually post that into WebAssembly. And WebAssembly is how I was able to implement it in the browser here and have it still work at native speeds. So, you know, it was a pretty cool project. I got to mess around with Rust and WebAssembly at the same time. And I'll show you how I do that at like the end of the video. But anyway, this algorithm here has two main parts. So the first part, it has to read all the byte data from the file and actually generate this like abstract representation of a donut from what it's read. And that's all the way down here in this build donut function. For those of you who want to poke through my code later. The second part actually takes the abstraction of a donut and it renders it into a PNG output. So it, it's render donut. I won't be going over render donut because it's, there's nothing really special about it. You just draw it out. I do have a few mathematical tricks that speed up the time, but you know, it's, it's mostly trivial. So I'm just gonna go over build donut. So the dough and the frosting of the donut can have different colors. Dough is either going to be vanilla or chocolate and the frosting can be either like vanilla, chocolate or strawberry. And that's based on the length of your file. So the most important number inside this algorithm is n. And n is basically just the square root of the length of your file. So n has a sort of threshold where I'm hoping n will be at least 25. So if n is less than 25, it'll be chocolate. Otherwise, it'll just be vanilla flavored. And then frosting is based on whether or not n is divisible by 2. And if not, then it's divisible by 3. And otherwise, it's just chocolate by default. So that means that the square root of the length of that thumbnail file was divisible by neither 2 nor 3, because this is a chocolate frosted donut. And then we get on to the sprinkles. So after I figured out all that n stuff, I start reading n sections of length n from the file. So I sort of like, I make sure I read it from throughout the file because otherwise, if I'm hashing like image files, I'd just be getting all that PNG format metadata from the beginning of the file. So you have to like spread it out, make sure you're getting it even spread for your donut if you're reading from a file. So I can just read that and then afterwards, all it has to do is take that byte data and then cast it to like some float value, some integer or some numeric value I can use. And then that can become like alpha and radius here, which define the sprinkles actual position, its rotation or, you know, orientation, how it's rotated on the donut. And then it's R, G and B values for what color it's gonna be. And then I make sure, I do some like mathematical stuff here to make sure it's positioned all properly and whatnot. And then I can put it into this little sprinkles vector. I definitely use structs for the sprinkles because rust structs are pretty nice. That's really all there is to generating that abstract representation of a donut. I'm not going to go too in depth into it because you know, the code's on GitHub if you want to look at it. And you know, like I said before, I'm only going to like skim over render donut. It's not too much. You basically just like go through the entire, you know, length of your image file. And then you basically figure out like, is this going to be like for each pixel, is it going to be dough, this uh, border here, empty color, this border color here or frosting. So then you go through, you like draw the entire donut line by line and then you draw sprinkles afterwards. So sprinkles was probably, that was the part where I had like a few optimizations for time speed up. Like you don't have, essentially what I do is I draw like a circle, another circle and I connect it with a rectangle. So really you have to loop over that inner rectangle and then draw out the circles on either side just by like adding some delta x, delta y values 
you know, because you already know where everything is, you just apply a transform. It's it, it's pretty nice. That way I don't have to like, I can cut down on for loops and stuff like that. So, you know, anything that will speed up your program, you should probably put in your program, unless it's like hello world or something. So yeah, this is all the like rendering sprinkles code. It's nothing too fancy. And then I do put like, at each position I put one pixel and I put pixels eight positions around it. Just because before I did that, you know, when you're converting floats into a set pixel value, sometimes you get a bunch of holes. So I just have to make sure like, you know, you, you fill in those holes. So this was the original implementation. This was a command line interface before I decided to be all fancy and put into WebAssembly. So let's actually watch this run real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and build it real quick just to make sure that it works. And we're going to run. Now, the donut program, I have to specify an input file. So the input files I'll be choosing today is Stadium Arcadium, one of my favorite albums, Thor Ragnarok, one of my favorite movies, and uh, well, I'm sure I'll find some other third file. So let's go ahead and try it on Thor Ragnarok. And there we go, we get this beautiful little donut. This is what the cover to Thor Ragnarok looks like as a donut. How exciting is that? And we'll run it on Arcadium. And this is what it would look like as a donut. I think probably the strawberry frosting is my favorite because it's just like so light and like, yes, this program works. It's very fun, you know? I mean, I like the, I like the chocolate donuts too and the vanilla. And then here's what our special third file looks like as a donut. The vanilla ones look nice too. Actually, you know what? I like all the donuts that it creates with this thing. They're all pretty cool. Okay, so you've seen the command line interface. You've seen me hash like really big image files. Now let's see what a donut looks like if it's like just a password real quick. So I'm just gonna come up with a clever password real quick. Brilliant. All right, and we're gonna go over to the website version and we're going to upload our password. Okay, so it doesn't work that well for very short passwords. Let's try a bit of a longer one. Maybe it doesn't work that well as a password hashing algorithm, but you know, it's getting there. It works well for big files. Let's see Thor Ragnarok again. Ah, much better. Yeah, so you see from the algorithm, the sprinkles are all placed in like, you know, different positions, different rotations, different colors. It ends up turning out pretty good, except for, you know, some sprinkles are really hard to see. That's apparently a sprinkle right there. Real quick, if you're feeling bored, comment down below, how many sprinkles are there on this donut? I bet you can't find them all. Okay, so I used like Webpack, Wasmpack, like a few NPM packages to just sort of like, you know, automate the whole Rust with WebAssembly stuff. So I'm definitely not an expert on it, but I was honestly so excited to be able to use Rust and WebAssembly, two technologies I've been dying to use together in a really cool project like this. So the code base for Rust is basically just the same. I just have to add some like Wasm components that you can actually convert to a donut from JavaScript. And then it takes in a byte array. In JavaScript it's called a uint eight array. So, you know, it's just an unsigned integer array, a byte array. I don't know why I said it like that. I just like being fancy. But anyway, it just takes like the raw byte array, converts it to a file and then spits it back out as a base 64 encoded URL image data. As you can see by my base 64 call right here. But yeah, apart from that, everything else is the exact same. So there's not really too much to talk about here, but if you guys do want a tutorial video on Rust with WebAssembly in the future, just let me know in the comment section down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about turning files into donuts. And I hope you don't think less of me knowing that this is what I do with my free time. On top of that, this is actually my 50th video on YouTube. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... I still can't believe I've like already made 50 videos. You know, I remember the first one when I started back in January and now it's like, you know, it's like eight months later, I got 50 videos out, like what? But you know, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty glad I decided to become a YouTuber. Sentiment and anniversaries aside, thank you all so much for watching till the very end of this video. If you enjoyed it or if you would like to help me out as a YouTuber, Please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on social media, or click the notification bell so that way you can be alerted whenever I decide to hash more files into donuts.
If you want to see more projects that are along the lines of this one, I have a few other videos around the screen here. Apart from that, I don't have too much else to say, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.